Man, sometimes I just get so tired of some of y'all. Y'all just be in the comment section, running y'all mouths, talking recklessly, stuff that just don't even mean nothing. Have to, you know what? Hold up, let me stop right there because I'm not myself when I'm hungry. Okay. I'm good now. See, now I'm feeling much more myself because of KentuckyCobblers.com. And make sure you hit them up. Uh, you can follow them on Instagram as well so you can get your own fresh bottle of cobbler. And see, the best part about it, they literally put pieces of whatever flavor it is that you get inside the jar. And it's also sealed for your safety and to keep it clean. So go to KentuckyCobblers.com where you can choose over 20 flavors. Dog, just get all of them. Be greedy with it. Hit them up quick, fast, in a hurry so you won't be hangry like me. Now let's get into this episode. Yeah. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs Where you can ask me any question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids And if you don't, you don't have to, that's perfectly fine I love y'all, I appreciate y'all We got some great questions as we always do Let's jump into it. First question came from my guy Enon. He said, Hey, Engraven, hope you and the fam are doing well. I saw a pic of you and the fam on Instagram and the crew was looking sharp. They appreciate it. Oh, yeah, that was at Memorial. Shout out to JW. And he said, My question for you is it's draft time. You're the Ravens GM and you have one minute to turn in your pick at pick 14. The QB run we hope for didn't happen, but teams ahead of us have a variety of needs. So drafting by BPA, best player available isn't an issue and for some reason our choices are varied at defensive tackle jordan davis cornerback trent mcduffie as jermaine johnson and wide receiver Traylon burks who's your pick for at 14 and why mm. out of those four um ooh, jordan davis trent mcduffie jermaine johnson and Traylon burks um i would say i'd say jordan davis I say Jordan Davis out of all those guys. Reason being because he will allow for everybody's job on defense to be easier. Um, he will impact everybody's job on defense um, and he will allow them to have easier matchups um, and matchups where they don't have to be matched up for as long as they normally would. Uh, he would command just a, a huge presence uh, on the inside. Because say, for instance... And this is just one player. I'm, I'm just going by one player at a time. Say, for instance, we got a Trent McDuffie. I like him. Y'all know he can play inside and outside, but I, I like Trent McDuffie a lot. But if you get a corner, and, and again, this is just going one player at a time, not talking about the whole draft, because I know you can continue to address needs later on. But Jordan Davis' impact, to me, it impacts everybody. Trent McDuffie, if they were to draft him, then it just impacts the wide receivers that we got to go up against. It does help the secondary be better and provides quality depth, uh, but it just helps the wide receivers. Now, if you can't get no pressure, you got the best cornerbacks in the world. <laughs> it ain't going to mean much, my friend, because uh, them cornerbacks, they're going to be out there, but they're going to be so tired after chasing after these wide receivers, and y'all ain't getting no pressure, so it's going to be tough. Jermaine Johnson, hey. You could have some fire edge guys, uh, but a lot of it has to do with scheme as well. But uh, if you ain't got nobody collapsing that pocket and, and, and just really taking on those uh, offensive linemen, the center, the guards, uh, nobody's that's really consuming them like that in the middle. The edge guys, they could get double teamed all day. They could get chipped all day. They still going to be able to get theirs here and there, but it just – they an edge guy – I feel like they, they can obviously help, of course, but a bigger help would come from the inside because a quarterback, they could just step up in the pocket. They can step up in the pocket. Uh, they, they can make that little edge guy miss. But as far as if somebody's collapsing the pocket, then that, that makes it hard, even for the fastest quarterbacks. 
If the the if inside the pocket, if that's collapsing, that makes it so much harder for a quarterback to escape, and it just makes everything that much more challenging for them. Uh, and as far as Traylon Burks, <laughs> y'all already know where I'm at for wide receiver. Now that 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 was a tough one right there because he would make people's job on offense easier, and that's a big thing that we want to happen. Um, but the the Ravens they will have a a plethora of wide receivers uh, to choose from and quality wide receivers as well. Um, so Pickens, I'm still looking at the Ravens picking Pickens, uh, but we'll see how that goes. So yeah, out of these, I would choose Jordan Davis because I feel like he would have the biggest immediate impact out of all of them. Uh, and he said, love what you're doing with the channel. Although I watch the vids all the time, I don't always comment. Uh, as far as that negativity, I remember your mantra, block and move on. Oh, boy, because, oh, 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 boy. Hey, I, uh, I've i been on that, recently, especially over the past couple of days, I, I've been on that heavy. Because um, I just, like, I, I've been trying to get better as far as engaging with it. Because I've been trying not to even engage with it. Especially if I see if it's somebody that got, like, this pattern of negativity. I'm like, you know what? I, let me just block. None personal, just well, it is actually personal for me and, and for my peace and just for um that's it. It it ain't nothing personal against the person, but it's more so for me. I, I don't wanna deal with no negativity, I don't wanna hear it, don't wanna see it. Uh cause it's one thing about about disagreements, fine, going back and forth about whatever issue with the Ravens, blah blah blah, fine or NFL, whatever, fine. That's fine. Y'all know I don't care about that. I don't care about that, but you could tell people's vibe, man. You could tell people's vibe. You could tell people's energy. You could tell, especially if it's a repeated offender or a repeated somebody doing the same thing over and over. You you, you could always tell. Um, so it's best to just be like, I right, I see where this is going. I see where this is headed. I see the direction that this is taking. Nah, I'm good. Don't even want to deal with it and just move on. It, it's just it's it's so much better, and it just it's a beautiful thing. Um. And he said, here's hoping that Boykin finds a new team and makes the most of his opportunity as a wide receiver. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, he, he sent this on April 19th. And he sent it. Let me see what time he sent it at. He sent, obviously, before he got picked up by the Steelers. He sent it at 301. I think Boykin got picked up like around like four. Uh, yeah, because he would go on the waiver wire. Um, so, yeah, the Steelers put in a claim for him. So, yeah, that would have been made official at 4 p.m. Um, so yeah, so you were, uh, if you would have just sent this an hour later, you would have found out, but I, I know you know now. Next question came from my boy Harry. He said, good day to you engraving and the rest of the team. Keep it clean, fam. Hope everyone is well and excited to see the direction our favorite team will take with this upcoming draft. Yeah, it's coming up very, very soon. Me and my family, especially my dad, are big Ravens fans. We were arguing over who's the better GM between Ozzy and Eric. Oh, see, this is tough. And I know this comparison has been getting thrown around back and forth, especially recently. Especially, <laughs> this is where it comes up the most. Whenever you, <laughs> whenever you hear, "Oh man, Ravens tried to get that guy, but it didn't. It didn't end up happening. Oh, they just came up that short. Oh, the guy didn't want to come here." That's when, um, that's when I hear it get thrown around the most. Like, "Oh man, we need to get Ozzy back. Oh man, Ozzy's better." Eric, I, that's when I hear it the most. Um, but for me, I, I, I think it's, it's very, it, it's hard to come. It's almost impossible to compare. And like Eric's been a GM since what? 2019. Um, and Ozzy have been a GM since for forever before. Um, so it's like Ozzy had years and years and years and years and years doing this. Eric has had years. Um, so, I mean, the comparisons are going to happen because Eric's taking over, like, officially for Ozzie Newsom. We know Ozzie Newsom is still behind the scenes and whatnot. Then they just switching because Eric was behind the scenes more before and Ozzie was up front, but now they, they just switch positions. Um, so with that being said, um, it's just, it's, it's a very hard comparison. But again, it's going to happen. It's like when people compare C.J. Mosey to Ray Lewis. It wasn't fair to him, but it's going to happen because he's the one that stepped into the role uh, a couple years after Ray Lewis Well not a couple years But y'all know what I'm saying And it's like comparing Eric Weddle To Ed Reed Matt Elam to Ed Reed um, Whatever safety we get Being compared to Ed Reed It's not 
unfair to them because the person before them, they accomplished so much. They had their misses now too, but they accomplished so much. So it's, that's why it's so hard to make the comparison because it's not like it's this level playing field, at least in my opinion. I don't think it's a level playing field because, again, Ozzy was there for, what, 20-something years, and now Eric is there going on his – this is his third, fourth year, I mean. So, it's again, it's just tough. Anyway, continuing. He said, uh, we were arguing over who's the better GM between Ozzy and Eric. My dad likes to claim Ozzy, but I told him it's only because Ozzy has done it longer and most of his drafts helped us to become the Ravens who we are. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, but yeah, again, that's what, exactly what I was saying. Too. I probably should have kept reading first. Um, but yeah, Ozzy had been doing it a much longer time, and he was vital in forming the Ravens. I mean, right? Like all the Ravens legends were drafted with Ozzy Newsom as GM. All of them. Now Eric, he played a part in that too. He was helping out, but Ozzy was the one who was the GM. So the Ravens, how they uh they built on defense and defense, 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 these historic defenses. Um, obviously two Super Bowls. Um, that that that'll kind of give you the edge too. Uh, but yeah, so it just it it makes sense because he he had been doing it for so long. But anyway, um, he said. With that said, uh, though, I told him don't think that in Oz we trust never had a bad draft. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because um, a lot of people, they see Eric DaCosta's drafts, and they be like, oh, man, Ozzie Newsom, he drafts so much better. But Ozzie did, he did have a lot of misses, too, now. He had a lot. Now, he took a lot of swings, but he, had, he sure had a lot of misses. And had some drafts where it was like, ooh, yikes. Big yikes. Huge yikes. Um, uh, he said, um, I told him that I, I can recall four drafts that Ozzie had that stunk. So he said 2004. So let's look up the 2004 uh, Ravens draft picks or draft class. I mean, all right, here we go. Um, oof, yikes. Oh, goodness gracious. Where'd it go? It just disappeared on me. I just saw it and it disappeared. All right, so the 2004 draft class, round two. Dwan Edwards. Oh, he certainly didn't work out. Oh, round three, DeVar Darling. I remember him. He didn't work out. 150, uh, round five, Roderick Green. I don't remember him. Uh, six, Josh Harris, quarterback. I don't remember him. Six, another six round pick, Clarence Moore. I remember him. Six foot six, Clarence Moore. I remember him for sure. Um, number Round seven, Derek Abney, wide receiver. Yikes. And pick seven, Brian Rimpf, offensive guard. Yikes. Wow. Big yikes. He also said 2005. Uh, well, let's go there. Let's go to 2005. Um, first round pick was Mark Clayton. He started getting a lot better toward the end of his career with the Ravens, but it just it never really worked out. Uh, then he went to the Rams, and it was looking good. Then he got hurt. He just kept getting hurt, and that was the end of his career. Ooh, Dan Cody, second round pick. Another second round pick, offensive lineman Adam Terry. I always remember his picture from Madden. Adam Terry, his picture was so happy. He was like, I like that in Madden. <laughs> oh, round four, Jason Brown, the center from uh, North Carolina. I remember him. Uh, ooh, Justin Green, running back in the fifth round pick. Don't remember him. Derek Anderson, shout out to him, quarterback. He went to go play for the Browns. He played for the Panthers, too. Um, and then linebacker Mike Smith from Texas Tech. Oh, that's another big yikes. Okay, so yeah, these are definitely two uh two misses. Then he said 2015 was another one. Let's go to 2015. Uh, first round pick, Brashad Perryman. I already don't like you for this one. Uh, but second round pick, Max Williams. Oh man, I had high hopes for Max Williams. I really thought he was gonna be that dude. I really did. But he's still oh, he over there in Arizona doing this thing. Uh oh, Carl Davis. What happened to him? Cause I know he went to the Browns. He was there for a tiny I don't know what happened to him after that. Uh, round four, Zadarius Smith. Okay, now. Uh, round four, Buck Allen. Okay, now. Uh, oh, round four, Trey Walker. That that can't be held against him. Uh, but round five, Nick Boyle. Still going. Still going. Uh, round five, uh, Robert Myers. And round six, Darren Waller. So this draft is crazy because 
This this draft. Oh, okay. Let let me read because I see he wrote something about it. Um, he said, uh, 2004, the best player we drafted was Clarence Moore. <laughs> 2005, Mark Clayton and Derek Anderson were our best in 2015. Wasn't necessarily bad, but everyone had success after they weren't Ravens except Nick Boyle, Bashar Perryman, Darius Smith, and Darren Waller. Boom. So that's what I was getting ready to say. And, and now Buck Allen, too. He had success on the Ravens. It wasn't like this crazy amount of success, but he was, um, he was impactful on the Ravens. Um, and let's go to 2016. 2016 was another one that he named. All right. Uh, first round pick, Ronnie Stanley. Great player, but the injuries have just been killing him. Second round pick, Kamele Correa. Outside linebacker, but Ravens wanted to use him as an inside linebacker and got confused why it didn't work. Um, oh, Bronson Kafusi. Oh, this is the draft where we didn't, um, want to trade that third round pick that Bronson Kafusi picked to move up and get Jalen Ramsey. This is the one. Okay. Uh, fourth round pick, Tavon Young. He worked out besides the injuries. The play on the field, great. Like, again, Ronnie Stan So, both Ronnie Stanley and, and, and Tavon Young, both good players, but they got hurt a lot. Chris Moore. Chris Moore, um, good special teamer. He was a return guy. Uh, they, he got in there receiver every now and then. Um, but he was, he was solid. Alex Lewis, he was all right. Um... Definitely worked out. Well, he went to the Jets, and he was there for a little bit. And after that, I don't know where he is now. Um, Willie Henry. Oh, Willie Henry. What happened to him? He. I remember he got cut like a couple years back, and he just disappeared. Never heard from him again. Kenneth Dixon. Shout out to Kenneth Dixon. Um, after he got cut in 2019... He, he, he went Did he go I don't know what happened to him after that Matt Judon <laughs> Okay we know about Matt Judon Keenan Reynolds Wide receiver Wow He was actually a quarterback In college And they tried to turn him into a wide receiver I don't know uh, And then Six round Another pick was Maurice Kennedy And he, he was up and down with the Ravens Then I think he went to the Jets A lot of these guys end up going to the Jets You know Jets They love them Ravens Anyway uh, he said 2016 would have been a good draft except of the three gems we found, Stanley, Young, and Judon. Judon is the only one that has good health. Stanley and Young are great when they can get on the field. I told my dad all of this because he seems to think Ozzy only drafted Hall of Famers or Ring of Honor personnel. Oh, no, no, no. No, he did not. He didn't. Now, he, of course, drafted a lot of them, but that was, it was a lot of misses, too. A lot of misses, too. And I think a lot of times with the Ravens, they're known as this great drafting organization. They're known as this great drafting team. And I, I think that's because um, when they hit, like, they hit. Like, when, when Ravens hit on a draft pick, or oh, they, they hit on a draft pick and they knock it out the park. And it's like, oh, let's go. And some of these players, they can be just so impactful for the Ravens. But when they miss. When they miss, they miss. And they miss big time. So, anyway. Um, I'm sure there's going to be somebody who says, oh, well, you can say that about anything. But, anyway. Um, he said, uh, now, Eric's first draft was a big miss, except for Hollywood. Um, and, yeah, like, now let, let me go to that draft, 2019, because it ain't really that many people still standing. We still got Hollywood. Jalen Ferguson, he's still on a team. We'll see what happens with him. Miles Boykin is officially gone. Justice Hill is still here. Uh, ben Powers, he's still here. Uh, even Marshall, haven't even seen him yet. Dalen Mack, he's gone. Trace McSorley, he's gone. So, that's that. Um, but he said, uh, Eric's first draft was a big miss except for Hollywood. But like 2015, I'm hoping that... It was more about how we use the players and not the players themselves. The last two drafts, I think he actually did pretty good. I just think my dad and other Ravens fans like him need to be patient with Eric DaCosta. If he nails this draft, which I'm hoping he does, that will mean three out of the four years he did his job very well. Your thoughts? Mm. We're going to see. We are going to see. Um, the As far as his drafts, and I know as far as really judging a draft class, you can't really judge them all the way until at least like three, four years after they're drafted. Um, but that's where we are right now with the 2019 draft. So overall, 
um, based off of the impact, it is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. You got like just such a lack of impact uh, from the class as a whole. Obviously, Hollywood has had a huge impact, but that's pretty much been it. Other guys have contributed here and there. Um, but they've he's gotten better because into 2020, Patrick Queen he certainly had an impact. Uh, J.K. Dobbins certainly had an impact. Matt B.K. has had somewhat of an impact. Devin Duvet has had an impact. Uh, Malik Harrison not quite yet. Tyree Phillips has had an impact. Ben Bredesen he's gone. Broderick Washington he just started having an impact last year with the injuries and stuff and COVID and all that. James Prochet hasn't really had an impact. Geno Stone uh, not really, but um. So he's gotten more impact out of those guys. And then last year, Rashad Bateman, he had an impact when he was healthy. Adafi away, uh, yeah. Uh, ben Cleveland, he ended up becoming a starter. Brandon Stevens, he was out there a lot. Tylen Wallace, he got hurt. He didn't really have an impact. Sean Wade and Daylon. Sean, Sean Wade, Ben Mason, you cut both of them. And then, then Daylon Hayes, uh, he was hurt. So, again, the uh, the impact is, is, is getting better. It's, it's getting better. So that's the biggest thing that you want. That's the biggest thing you want. You want uh, the draft to um, to you want to get impact guys throughout the draft. We know not every single player from every single round is going to start. We we get that, but you want to have more impactful players than not. And then of course you want to have quality depth uh, for other areas of your team. So hopefully moving forward. Eric can keep doing his thing and he can keep just getting better at this thing. Uh, and Ravens really find a way to maximize these rookies and just these players' talents moving forward.